Welcome to the lab. Today, we're making three shooting boards to work with a block plane. In the video, we're gonna cover how to make a 90, a 45, and an adjustable angle shooting board. This one features a movable back plate. The construction is fairly simple. I use plywood, some hardwood, a handful of screws, some bolts, and a couple knobs. These shooting boards are a great addition to any shop. You can take a piece of wood that's been cut close to your desired angle and with a few passes you can have your perfect 45, your 90, or whatever angle you set. To start off the build, I ripped down a piece of plywood to 14 inches. Once my stock is ripped to width, I go ahead and install my cross-cutting sled. I'm cross-cutting using a stop block on the fence so I don't create any binding, which in turn can create a nasty kickback. I've opted to cross-cut to 14 inches, creating a square with my stock. Once my boards are cut to size, I move over to the router table to cut the groove that the hand plane rides in. For this operation, I am using a router bit that has a flat top and is fairly large to hog out a lot of material. I set the height of my router bit to the bottom edge of the hand plane blade. For my first pass, I set the fence to the back edge of the router bit. For the width of my groove, I go ahead and reference the flat section of the side of my hand plane and adjust the fence to cut that width. In order for the shooting board to work, I have to ensure that the sole of my hand plane is square to my board. If you have to make any adjustments, you can use a hand plane to do so. Once I finish tuning up the base of my shooter board, I can move over to my joiner and join and plane some stock for the rails. After each cut on the table saw, I move over to the joiner to ensure my board is nice and square. Once I've cut my rails, I use a combination square to ensure that all sides are square to each other. Lastly, I go ahead and use a hand plane to put a chamfer on one of the edges. This will help with dust management in the future. Once I've cut my stock to length, I go ahead and mark center and the locations of my screws. When installing the rail, I take care to make sure the chamfer side edge is down and towards where the stock will be. This will allow for debris to slide under and not alter your angle. For this board, I've decided to set the fence in slightly from the back so I can go ahead and clamp it down in the future. Once I'm satisfied with the position, I can go ahead and install one screw. When screwing in the second screw, use a square to make sure nothing moves. Once that's done, you can run a test to see if everything is aligned. If you're satisfied with the outcome, go ahead and drive in the remaining three screws. Now moving on to the 45 degree angle board. First, I start off by cutting a 45 degree angle in my back rail. Once my stock is cut, I can go ahead and repeat the same steps I used for the 90 degree shooting board. When driving in my second screw, I go ahead and use a 12 inch adjustable square. To check alignment, I go ahead and shoot two 45 degree pieces. Put them together and use a square to check 90. This will amplify any error in the angle. If set aside, go ahead and drive in the remaining three screws. An important element to these shooting boards is a rail on the bottom. 
This rail will reference the edge of your workbench, ensuring the shooting board won't slide around while in use. Once cut, I can go ahead and install the rails on the bottom side of the board closest to the user. I attach this part using glue, some brad nails, and some screws. Once installed, I go ahead and give it a quick sand to eliminate any sharp edges. To wrap up the build on the 90 degree shooting board, I go ahead and do one last cut and check to make sure nothing moved during assembly. I go ahead and repeat the steps for installing the bottom rail on the 45 degree board. over to the adjustable angle shooting board. I start this build by marking a 45 degree angle on my board. From there I can use a large compass to mark out my rotation line. To cut this curved groove I go ahead and attach a trim router to a piece of wood. Go ahead and drill through my jig to where the center of my circle was. Then I can install a pin and pivot the router on that pin. Once my jig's ready to go, I can plunge slowly into my plywood using a quarter inch router bit. I take multiple shallow passes to ensure a nice clean cut. Once I've made it through about half of an inch, I can go ahead and continue my center hole down to the other side and rotate my board. On this side of the board, we're going to go ahead and change our router bit to a half inch. This will allow for room for the bolt on the bottom. Time to install my adjustable rail. I first start by marking center on my rail. I choose a Forstner bit that's slightly larger than the base of my knob and drill through about a quarter of an inch. I then select a drill bit that is slightly larger than the shaft of my knob and I drill through. Then I select a drill bit that'll work for my threaded insert. Now I made a mistake here with the placement for my threaded insert. It should have been in the hole that I had drilled previously as my rotation point. I was able to fix this mistake by increasing the size of the holes for my knobs. Once that knob is placed, I can go ahead and figure out my drill location for the second knob. Here I am drilling a through hole that has a diameter that is slightly larger than my bolt. Once my holes are drilled, I go ahead and use a countersink bit to refine the edges. Now I have to cut two grooves through my adjustable rail. 
I did this on the bridge port, but it could also be done using a drill press and a chisel, a router table, or even the domino. Place the grooves a couple inches in from either side and milled it out using a 3 8 inch router bit. Once my slots are milled, I can go ahead and find the location of the threaded inserts on the adjustable backer. Once I figure out the location of my threaded inserts, I can head over to the drill press and drill out for my threaded inserts. Once my holes are drilled, I go ahead and install the inserts. My threaded inserts were slightly too long, so I went ahead and used a file to level them off to the surface and then refine the edge with a countersink bit. Once that was done, I could do a quick assembly to make sure everything fit appropriately. The final step of the build is installing the rail the same way I did on the other two boards. At this point, I went ahead and disassembled my shooting boards and prepped for finish. When I'm sanding my boards, I'm taking great care that I'm not altering any of the angles. For finish, I use feed and wax, which is fairly simple. You just wipe on, let it soak in, and wipe off the excess. After I finish wiping off the excess finish, I go ahead and install my adjustable rails. For good measure, I also used some Renaissance wax and applied it to the groove for the hand plane. Once all the parts are finished, I go ahead and run a quick test on my 90, 45, and adjustable board to make sure they're all working. And that's it three new additional jigs to your shop collection. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time in the lab.